Yo, 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 we live on location. NBA Summer League 2023. Wonderful Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here at the XS Nightclub at the Win Hotel, Las Vegas. We got the blackest one in the building. Yes, sir. And hey, we chilling out with WNBA and pure basketball royalty today. Yes, you feel sir. We world got champion. Top 25 Hall of Fame, a world champ. We got one of the very first point guards of the WNBA when it first came around. We got the lovely Tisha mm, Pinachero. Yeah, thank you. Hey, we hey, appreciate hey. you pulling up. Absolutely. My pleasure. First of all, thank you for coming on our show. We big fans of yours and, you know, uh, followed your career. And uh, just thank you for coming on. For yeah, I've been trying to get on the show. So it's a special <laughs> day today. When you first got to the WNBA, who was the first person to bust your ass? Mm, it's a tough question. It's, you know, I was a point guard, but I always guarded other players. So um, probably Cheryl Swoops. I mean, she her first step was crazy. So I never really guarded the point guards, always guarded the wings. The so wings. I would say probably Cheryl or Coop. Uh, I don't remember, so I think that's a good thing that I don't remember yeah. somebody busting my ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I would probably say one of those two. Portugal. I didn't know you was from Portugal. Yes. I don't want to mispronounce what part of Portugal can you yeah. pronounce. Figueira the Fosh. Okay. Uh, you okay. never would have said that right. <laughs> you would have been so far off. Yeah, Ooh, I, I should have let, we yeah. should let them try that. Say it, try and say it one time. No, I don't. I don't she just said it right. I don't want to mess that up. <laughs> You grew up in a country where soccer is like yeah. the number one sport, is the number one yeah. sport. How did basketball become the thing yeah. that you wanted to do? out? Because I, I know everybody around you plays soccer. Yeah, family thing. My dad played, and then he was my first coach, and I have an older brother and also play basketball. So basically, I started playing when I was five, six, dribbling the ball at the house, and I was super lucky. There's not a lot of playgrounds in Portugal, but I literally have one right across from my house. So wow. I spent countless hours there. Sometimes it was nighttime. I couldn't even see the hoop anymore. My mom would have to literally come and like yell my name to come and shower and have dinner. But uh, so, yeah, definitely a family thing. Who was you watching at an early age to just put the swag in your, your game? Yeah. Like for you to be an overseas player, yeah. to have the swag. <laughs> that you had in your in game. Flash. Like, what you was watching when you okay, was coming up that so you getting the dribble with. I'm about to tell my age, but, you know, <laughs> uh, in Portugal, we had, I grew up with two channels. That's it, right? Yeah. And on Sunday afternoons, we had a, not live, but we had an NBA game. And my favorite player back then was Magic Johnson. Yeah, okay. So uh, it kind of made sense. He was a tall point guard and obviously he had the flair. And right after I watched that game, I would go to playground and just try to try basically do everything mm -hmm. that he did. You know, so I think like that was kind of the guy that I, I try to, you know, watch and uh, emulate when I was, uh, you know, back then. So you, you play in the, you call it the club team. That's like the pro team. Mm -hmm. Tell us a process of how you got to the point where you finna start playing professional in your country. As a teenager. As a teenager. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a completely different system than the States, right? Here, everybody plays in school. There, yeah. you kind of, your parents pick a sport, pick a club, and take you to that club and, you know, enroll you in that specific sport. So mm -hmm. most people in Europe just play one sport growing up. Yeah. Uh, I'm from a very small town, Figueira de the Forge. It's mm -hmm. like 30,000 people, so there was only two clubs, and one didn't have basketball, so my parents took me uh, to this club, and I kind of started there. My dad was the first coach. I didn't have actually a, a girls' team for my age group, so I played with the boys. Oh. So my dad was the coach, and I was the only girl. I look like a little boy, I had a little bowl cut, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that's how it kind of started. And then at 16, I started playing with the national team. And then, you know, you can become a pro. But my goal was always to come to the States and go to college. Yeah, like, right. I knew very early that, you know, I wanted to get out of Portugal and come to the States. What did you hear about colleges? Like, how did that process get to the point where yeah. it's like you hearing about college? What did you know about college so there's no internet right this is like yeah, 1990 right. yeah, yeah. I, can't, That's what I'm saying. I can't research anything but yeah. my brother played pro and he always had americans on his team yeah so we all they always come to my house my mom used to cook for them so i always like very from a very young age was introduced to the american culture and yeah. i just knew that this is where the best coaches are i can actually player. get my degree and get better so i just knew i was like i have to get out of here but i didn't know how right yeah but when I was 16, so it was like 1992, uh, 
we were playing in the professional league in Portugal and this lady that at the time she graduated from Dartmouth and she went to play professional in Portugal. Her name is Alison Green. And after the game, she came up to me and she was like, oh my God, you're so good. Like, you need to go to the States. I was like, I want to. I just don't know how, how to go to, about yeah. it. And she was just like, okay, give me your number. So I actually had to give her like my parents' landline number. Right, you know, right. I don't have a number. Like, I don't have a phone. Yeah. Um, so two years later, she became the assistant coach at Old Dominion. So mm. she told the coaches, you guys about have to go you. to Portugal and, you know, and recruit this girl. Like, she's she's And good. that's how Old Dominion That's came. what I was yep. going to say. How did that come into play? Like, that's crazy. It's crazy. If she would have became an assistant coach somewhere else, I probably would have gone so, there. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know anything about Old Dominion. Like I, like I said, it could have been a D3 school. I yeah. don't know. I know that I came on a visit. They took me to, to Virginia Beach. You know, I'm a beach girl. Yeah. So they took me to eat seafood. They And I'm like, all right, I'm coming. Where do I sign? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. let's do this. So. So it was kind of, you know, it's sometimes you kind of just go with the flow and it kind of worked out Did you perfectly. try to go to any other college or look into any other college or you were just pursuing what was in front of you? So this was kind of like the first one that came along. And then I actually did a summer camp in New York at yeah. Pace University. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, this guy in Portugal put something together. And then when I was there, the Florida coach came. I don't know how she found out that I was there, uh, but it was one of those periods that, the coaches cannot talk, cannot speak to uh, the players, players, right? The yeah. NCAA rules, but yeah. I don't know anything about that. So she wrote me a note, but I was mad because I'm like, "How you want to want to sign me, but you don't even talk to you me, and you just write me." me. <laughs> so I, that turned me off. But mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't you know, didn't know she couldn't talk on. to me, right? So, uh, so yeah. I mean, once I did my visit to Old Dominion, I just was like, "This is the place for me." Was that the first time you were like away from your family and being like you going way overseas? How was that for you coming? So now I'm about to be living here and going to school here. Well, first of all, I have to thank my parents, you know, at age 18 to to leave the country, to go across the ocean. I mean, you know, yeah. I just, they cannot get to me on the weekends or anything like that. Again, they, I used to write letters to my parents. We didn't have FaceTime. We didn't yeah. have WhatsApp. We didn't have any of that, right? Yeah. So uh, it know was about so... about the pay phones and all this Oh, stuff. it was so <laughs> expensive to call home. I had yeah. to get these calling cards and it was super expensive. So... You know, my parents knew it was my dream, and I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, when your parents support you, it was really hard for my parents to, like, let me go. And I didn't know if I was going to be successful, but to me, it's like, I'd rather go and fail than to never go. Yeah. You know, so I had to do it for myself, and obviously... I always betted on myself, and I knew that this is what I had to do to, to make sure that I belonged and I could, you know, be the best player that I could be. That's That was my goal. I didn't know what that meant, but that's all I wanted to be. So now you at Old Dominion, you you on campus. Mm -hmm. How was, like, being there for that first year and, and uh, you know, go through the practices and the season? And when was, like, them rough moments that you, you, might, you might not have thought that you can do it and, and the times that it was yeah. good? Because you basically build a whole nother family in a whole yeah. nother country. Right. I mean, it, it's true. You know, not every not every day speeches and cream. You're going to have b bad days. But to me, that adversity is what makes you better. You know, when you yeah. are able to go over the hurdle and I mean, probably missing home was the, the, the hardest one, you know, to, to be homesick. Um, but I knew it was going to be worth it. I was like, I'm here for a reason. Uh, my goal is to obviously graduate, to become a better woman, to become a better player. Yeah. And I'm going to go through with it until the end. And then we'll see what happens. And the timing was perfect because I was I was in college from 94 to 98. When I came, there was no WNBA. My goal right. was to go back overseas and play there. Yeah. But then he's like, oh, shoot, maybe, maybe I can play in the WNBA, you know. So then WNBA came around 97, and it was perfect because the scouts could see me. If I wasn't yeah. back in Portugal, ain't nobody going over there to see me. Yeah. So it was just like the perfect timing, and um, I'm so glad that I, 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 I took the chance and came. The era you played in, the competition in college, it's a whole nother level yeah. than what you just came from like yeah. when did you feel like you adjust did you feel like you was right away ready or you feel like it's a lot oh you got a lot to learn and and it's the style of play is totally different I mean, starting with like lifting weights, watching film, practice was three hours. We didn't have no water breaks. I'd be like, I'm thirsty. <laughs> you know, over in Europe, it's one and a half. You got to get out because another team is coming into the gym. Yeah. So that was a lot of adjustment, but that's what preseason and then pre, you know, it's it got mm -hmm. me ready. And um, and I just, I felt like the coaches and my teammates really helped me to adjust. Uh, I think I'm a person that can adjust well to, to new, you know, new situations. Yeah. I'm not shy. I'm extra. Yeah. Uh, so, but obviously, I, I found great teammates and coaches that you know made me feel home. So, like you said, I, I did find a second family that kind of, you know, 
was able to to connect and I didn't miss my family as much. The language barrier, did you mm -hmm. have any problem with, with I that? I mean, I spoke English, but not as well as it's, I speak today, obviously. Yeah. And it's so funny because I had a problem with H's because in Portuguese, we <laughs> don't like pronounce the H's. So I'll be like, Michael Hare Jordan. <laughs> 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 I'll be like, hello. You know, so <laughs> I would never know when to pronounce the H or not. Yeah. So it was like, that was probably the hardest thing for me. I'm like, yo, I don't understand this H thing, but... I come a long way. I've How was it when way. you started playing? Like you was rookie of the year in the conference, right? Mm -hmm. So you like you obviously adjusted and hit the ground running as far as hooping. How was that for you? Uh, it was good. I mean, sometimes as a freshman in college, you don't get a lot of minutes, you know. So I wasn't sure, you know, what was the level of my teammates, you know. But I was willing to try it out and just, you know, prove that I I could play more than 30 minutes a game and even start. So as soon as preseason started, I mean, starting with that damn mile that we had to do. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, uh, I hate it when you have yeah, to start with that mile. Yeah, <laughs> that mile. I was like, what is that? I mean, I, I go by kilometers. What's a mile? I don't even know what that is. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it was great. I mean, the competition in practice was good. And, you know, my, my, my coaches trusted me as a point guard, as a foreigner point guard. It's not easy to, to kind of give you the keys and be like, yeah, go ahead and start. Right. But, uh, but it worked out pretty good. So Who was the first female you've seen that, that kind of intrigued you and, and caught your eye. I was like, man, she, she dope. I want to be like like her. Well, there was a few Europeans. I mean, obviously, I always watched the Olympics, and yeah. then there was uh, these uh, two Brazilians, Magic Paula and Hortensia. They were like out of this world the way they played. And yeah. then, I mean, on the American squad, you had Teresa Edwards. That it was somebody that I really looked like, up to. Yeah. Um, you know, but like I said, you you couldn't really. You can't really see it. Find yeah. it on the internet. So yeah, it was like so the Olympics, you know, you had to yeah. wait for for the games to come on. Um, and then when I got to the States, you just start being able to, to do everything. more research. And obviously I went to Old Dominion. So when I got there, everybody was like, everybody say you play like Nancy Lieberman. Lady yeah. Magic. Lady and I'm like, magic. I'm like, who the hell is this lady? Everybody talk about Nancy. Nancy. Who is Nancy? Bugging. Then I was like, when I was like, can I, was, I went to my coach. I was like, can you show me highlights or games yeah. of Nancy? Because everybody asking me, comparing me to her, and I don't even know who she is. Yeah, yeah. So when I saw her, I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. I got big shoes to fill, right? But I always took it as a compliment. And from day one, since I met Nancy, she was amazing. And uh, she's like Radies. my big sis. Love yeah. Nancy. She coached yeah. me with the big three. We yeah. won a championship. Yeah, I that's love my, Nancy. That's, that's love, my big love, sis. Love. We, um, we got that bond from Old Dominion. So, uh, yeah, we, we have a great relationship. When y'all made that run and went to the championship, yeah. uh, tell us about the run and, and playing Shamika Holesclaw in them in the championship, Pat, legendary past summer. Yeah, man, if R. I can, R. one R. game back out of my <laughs> Korea, that would be it. I could play it right now. <laughs> that one still hurts, you know. Uh, so we beat Stanford in the semifinals. Yeah. That was, they, they were the favorites. Yeah. And we were down by 17. We were able to tie it, go to overtime, and we beat like, them in overtime. And it was just exhausting, like physically, mentally. mentally and then we have yeah. to play Tennessee. See. They cruised past Notre Dame in the semifinals. Yeah. And obviously, Shamiqua was everything, Shemequa. right? Same thing. We were down by 17. We were able to tie it. And then I think we just ran out of gas and... Uh, you know, like I said, that game still hurts. 1997, Cincinnati, Ohio. Yep. How was it for you, like winning the Wade Trophy as a, as a, you know, as a senior? How was that for you? Had you had any aspirations or anything aware of those type of awards and stuff like that? <laughs> Can I be honest with you? I had no idea what the Wade Trophy was. Right. <laughs> I had no idea. I knew Nancy had won it, so I was like, shoot, if she won it, I want to win it. Right. You know. But uh, but then they re they told me like, you know, this basically you are the best player in college. I was like, what? So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Um, I mean, you, you win a lot of stuff, but it's, it's a team sport. And the way I play it, there's no way I win anything without my teammates. And also the coaches give me the green light to play the way I played. So, um, yeah, so that, that was cool, but I had no idea what that was. <laughs> when you heard the WNBA was about to be formed, it was about to be a, a American Pro Women's League, what was your first thought? I think the first thing I thought was like, I wonder if I can play in it, if I'm good enough, good to, enough to, play to play in it, in. right? So that, I think that was kind of the first thing. And then obviously I knew that other leagues tried to, to make it in the States, but they never really were Form. able to, to yeah. sustain, you know? So, but with this one, you knew that the NBA was behind it. Was it was different. So I remember yeah. I was drafted in 98. I remember going to, uh, to New York. They mm. brought me in because I had to choose between the ABL and the WNBA. So yeah. the ABL was at the same time. So 
So I actually could choose the two, between the two. So I went up to New York. I go into the offices. I meet David Stern. He comes in, and I'm with my agent, and he just comes in, and I'm like, dang. And then he leaves. Like, so we have a great conversation. My agent was like, that's big time. Like, he yeah, just came to talk to you. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, that was his baby. And, I mean, it's, it's basically the main reason why the WNBA is here because he put a lot of effort into it and he belie- believed in us. You know, yeah. unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. But he's uh, one of the big reasons why the WNBA is here. Tell us about your draft process. I mean, your draft, the mm-hmm. draft day. So this is back in 1998, right? We had fake live. Like, so yeah. I, we were in the in New Jersey in this, like, little studio in Sakakos, New Jersey. Uh-huh. And I already knew that I was going to Sacramento. Oh, how Actually, you Actually, know? let me rewind. <laughs> let me rewind. Utah had the first pick. Uh-huh. Like, not too many people know this story. So Utah had the first pick. They came to Old Dominion, the head coach and the assistant coach. is like, we're going to take you with the number one pick. Yeah. And I was like, dang, I don't want to go to Utah. Utah. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, cool. I don't even think I could fake it. I was just like, okay, great, whatever. So then they had pre-draft um, camp in Chicago. Yeah. And there was this uh, player from Poland. She was 7'2", Margot Didek. Mm-hmm. And probably people thought it was a typo. Ain't nobody 7'2". Yeah. So they go there, and she's really 7'2", two. and she's good. Like, I mean, she's really good skill. Like, I had played against her with the Portuguese national team against the Polish team. Yeah. So I knew that she was legit. So Utah ended up taking her with number one. So I ended up going to Sacramento. They had the number two pick. Mm-hmm. I want to go to three because Washington had the number three pick. And I wanted to stay close to Old Dominion because I like, I don't want to start all over again. Now I have to yeah, go to California, friends, found, yeah. start all over again. I don't know anybody. Yeah. So I actually wanted to be the number three pick. But, uh, but yeah, so we were in this studio in New Jersey. And they were like, you going to Utah, you going to Sacramento. So we already knew. But then it was like, so when the cameras start rolling and we call your name, just act surprised. So I remember being like, oh, I'm going to Sacramento. (laughs) 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 So this is how much he has evolved. Now he's live on TV and, you know, there's red carpet. Yeah. So, you know, so but that but that that was cool. How was it for you when, when you get drafted and you go, like you say, from that? East Coast where you mm-hmm. used to, you know, Old Dominion and you got friends and you go way across country yep. to Sacramento and you, you know, I mean, you get there, you got a good team, you got, you got uh, Ruthie Bolton, you yep. got, shout out Chi-Town, Yolanda Griffin, <laughs> Southside, so, you know what Yolanda I'm saying? Griffin. How was it for you getting out there and being on the West Coast and having to, you know, find your way out that way? Yeah, so I remember going on a plane and I'm just looking around right before we landed and I'm like, uh, all I see is cornfields. Yeah, I'm like, like what is this? I thought exact. Sacramento was the capital of California. Like, <laughs> what is going on? So, right. but yeah, um, I mean, they were like not very good the year before the first year. And like you say, Ruthie was the franchise player. Yo came the following year. Yeah. So our first year was, mm-hmm. it was tough. I don't even remember our, uh, I think we were eight and 22, something like that. We only won eight games. So mm-hmm. you come from a winning program and then you hit the pros and he's like dang and you just don't want to get used to it because you never want to get used to losing but but it was tough it was tough but uh, also again as a new city but new teammates new everything but they really opened their arms and welcomed me and i just felt right at home and i loved sacramento Let's speak about them Sacramento fans. Yes. Some of the best fans like in the some league. Some of the best fans Bells, ever. Right? Oh, <laughs> my God. man. That was our generation, the Cowboys. Yeah. They got the beam now. I like the beam, though. Yeah. It's fly, but they fans is on point. Yeah. How was that to, you know, to get embraced from the city and the fans yeah. and, and being a women's team and being in a small market? It was great. I mean, obviously, the Kings back then, it was – I mean – I got lucky because they were like one of the best teams in the league, but they were fun to watch. You have yeah. Chris Webber, you have Vlade, you have Mike Bibby, Jay w- Will. I mean, yeah. come on, Ooh, Pedro. I, 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 watch, I, I was in yeah. Sacramento because I used to watch Jay Will and I used to watch you on the yeah. women's side. <laughs> like, yeah, how yeah. was that being there when he was there? Oh, like, did you used crazy. to watch him and try and do any of this stuff? Like, cause, like y'all was like two of the flashiest PGs yeah. in the WN, the real NBA. Yeah. So it's like. He got me when he did that elbow pass. I, that was, I never that was did that. Crazy. <laughs> the best that was part crazy. about that was watching LO in the video, like, when yeah. he noticed that's yep. what he did to him, yeah. and I was like, yo, that was yes. sick. That was ill. Yeah, but those fans are great. And you know what? The team folded in 2009, and it was kind of out of nowhere. Nobody expected it. So we never never really had a chance to say goodbye to our fans, to thank them. But one thing I'm super proud is that we did bring in championship to, to the city. Yes. Um, and those fans were, were amazing. And I hope that soon, uh, at least in the area, like maybe the Bay Area or something, we can get another WNBA team, WNBA team back there because those fans deserve it. 
How was it when y'all was on the Weedy Box? When your team was, whole yeah. team was on the Weedy Box? I was the first women's team to ever be on the Weedy Box. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, yeah, I still have it. I, still I don't know if I, I, yeah, hope you I don't have the zero have inside, but uh, yeah, I still have it. I you mean, got it, to. You yeah, got to. You got to. That's that, a that moment was, right that there. That was amazing. I, and we were trying to win that championship for so long. I mean, playing in the West, especially with the Comets and yeah. Mercury, LA. I mean, it was tough, but we finally got it in 05. So that, that was big. Just tell us about this season and just how everything clicked for y'all to win it. Yeah, it was really about defense. Our coach, he called it the white line defense, and mm. we all bought in. At first it was like a little weird because sometimes we overhelped, but when everybody was on the same page doing it, um, I mean, it, we were unstoppable. And, I mean, we all say defense wins championships, so for us it was really true. I mean, until we bought in and, and really everybody had played a, a huge role uh, with, that, with that championship. But uh, Yo was the MVP, so yeah. uh, Shaq Town uh, represented. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Um, but we we were trying to get that that championship for a long time. What was that you feeling of accomplishment? Like now, call me champ yeah. around here. It's, Respect this. It's kind of surreal uh, because it was a close game too. But uh, when that buzzer goes off and the confetti like just starts like um, falling from the sky, and uh, you think like I knew that my family was like five a.m., but I knew they were watching at home, and yeah. you know it's just <laughs> a relief. Like all the hard work that you have put in the off season and throughout the whole season, and he finally like he paid off. You know mm -hmm. because sometimes you go you so close, you might be two field goals from winning a championship, but you kind of everything has to kind of go the right way no injuries everybody buys in you know you have to have a little bit of luck but for us it finally it finally happens sometimes you go a whole se a whole career without winning a championship you know and yeah. you never want to you know people to to say oh you didn't win a championship you're not this or that or whatever like you don't want that to define you but it just feels good I mean that's why you play the game is right. to win right yeah, so to, and to win in front win. of your fans like you yeah. said it was 17,000 people at Arco yeah. Arena it was packed crazy so, I remember um, that like like yeah I remember that I was so happy for y'all when y'all won yeah that so that was dope how do you describe like that that epic uh five game series against the shock like talk about that from you guys perspective yeah, it's tough. Another one, you know, we should have won back to back. And then it was crazy because we should have won game four in, uh, in sack. Um, everybody was, you know, ready. Had the champagne in the locker room, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then we had to go back to Detroit. And they couldn't even play at the Palace because there was a concert. So we played at, I think it's called Joe's. Uh, yeah. It was with oh, the hockey the, team. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Play. Um, I mean, it's tough. You know, Bill and Beer was the coach and they were just bruisers. You know, yeah, Cheryl Ford, Katie Smith, Deanna yeah, Nolan. Yeah. Uh, not yeah, enough people talk uh, about her. Yeah. Um, and and, um, yeah, it, it was tough. I mean, and um, I knew going back it was going to make it so much harder on us, and it, it was. Tell me this. You spoke on, like, the team folding, and um, just speak on how, how much of a weird situation that is, like, as far as, like, for the actual players that yeah. are on that team and how you guys had to go about the process of going and finding another team and just how all of that played out. Like, where were you when you found out the team yep. was going to fold and how did the news come to you guys as the players? Yeah, I was actually in the practice facility. So it was the off season. It was like around November. It was right before Thanksgiving. And I had surgery on my thumb. So I was just recovering and I just finished working out. I go back to my locker and I have a message from uh, like one of the, the ladies that work for us. And she was like, Tisha, call me when you get this. And I'm like, so I call and she was like, hey, uh, I have something to tell you. Like, uh, the Maloofs decided that, you know, the owners decided they don't want to have the team anymore, so we about to fold. And I'm like, what? Like, what does that mean? I'm like, no. Nah. So, and then the process is, so it did happen, and then this is November, so the next season we have to wait until April or May. So if you are under contract, there's going to be a dispersal draft. So the worst team from the previous year picks first. If you were not under contract, which I was not, then I'm a free agent right away. Mm. So then I had to decide where am I going to go next. Mm. So it was between actually San Antonio and L.A., so I ended up going to L.A., and I played two years um, with the Sparks. But, uh, but if, you, if you were in the contract, you kind of have no saying where you're going to go because a team just going to pick you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's tough right so there. So what was the decision on L.A. and San Antonio? I mean, I was going to play with uh, Delisha Milton and Jones and uh, yeah. Tina Thompson yeah. and Candace Parker. And yeah. I was just like... You know, they say, I remember the GM for the Sparks at the time was like, you the glove, like you, you, the, you the, the missing piece, like you, yeah. we need a point guard to give the ball to all these players. Uh, but 
right in the beginning of the season, Candace hurt her shoulder, so she was out for the season. Yeah. So obviously it didn't go as as expected. But uh, but you know, I, I I don't have many regrets in life. So at the end of the day, I I enjoy being in L.A. Kobe's dad was our coach yeah. at some point, you know, so that that was cool. Joe Bean always trying to play yeah. practice too and try to give <laughs> yeah. us buckets and talk trash. <laughs> so uh, I had a good time. What gave you the joy of the game when you played the game? It seemed like every time you play, it was a you were just having fun. You was always smiling. You were always into the game. You definitely was focused, but it yeah. was a, a joyful focus. Well, it's not to love, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm getting, this is my job, you know. Right. I'm, I'm playing, I'm getting paid to play basketball, you know, something yeah. that, you know, and, and to go back to what you said, you know, being from Portugal, from this little town, yeah. um, who would have said that I would have played in the WNBA NBA. and, mm -hmm. you know, play with all these amazing players and be successful. So, you know, that's all joy, you know. Um, I, I was really hard on myself and a little bit of a perfectionist. So sometimes when we lost, like, I, I used to be really mad and I kind of had to shift, you know, um, that that mentality. But, uh, yeah, basketball is joy. I mean, to this day, I, I don't play anymore, but I just, I'm I'm still, like, involved and yeah. I, I just really love to watch basketball. I love to watch sports, but it's just a cool sport and brings so many people together and then also, like, from all parts of the world. So, um, so yeah, I love it. How does it feel like when they come with a with the with the fifteenth, twentieth, twenty fifth WNBA anniversary team and you you know, you part of all of them. Yeah. You like literally one of the legends and icons of the game. It's uh it's surreal, honestly. Yeah. Um I sometimes I don't believe it, like um it's um <laughs> it, it's it's crazy. Um but you know, I always, like I said, I knew that I wanted to be the best player that I could be. I really didn't know what that meant, but yeah. I just knew that I wanted to give everything that I had to the game and then whatever results were going to come out of it, I was going to be okay with it. And if that's the result, like, I'm really okay with it. I mean, the top 25, like, when I got that call, it was insane. I mean, insane. just being... Yeah on that court we were in phoenix for the finals and looking around all yeah. the people they were yeah. like and i was the only european too it's just like what is that feeling like when you like like you crazy. say it's one thing to get the call to say you're gonna make but then like you say when you sitting there in that moment and you standing with all of the greatest yeah. to ever do it and you amongst them and then like you say you're the only european like yeah. what is like what is it's that it's like a dream like it doesn't even seem real like honestly yeah. um i mean I, I'm not. I'm not saying that because that's. I know it's cliche, but it's it's really surreal, you know. Um, and I know that people say I'm humble or whatever, and, and I always try to stay that way because I yeah. was not going to let anything change me. But you know, just going back to you know the way that I grew up and um, you know being from Portugal is just uh, and being like looking around for people that I've always admired and respected and to be amongst them it's it's, it's very surreal. I don't even know how to explain it. And then yeah. you you coupled it like how did it feel like I feel like you played in one of the you know when that started you were a guard and like you said you didn't guard the point guards mm -hmm. you guarded some Best of the player. greatest players yeah. in the history of the game. Like, how was that competitiveness? You Like, you spoke on swoops, cool. Yeah. Like, how was it to be in that era of it and, and, and to be going against, like, those top-level icons who, like, when you say we was in that 25, they was in those lines, too, and you know the battles y'all had. had. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what... Uh makes you the best, you know, to go against the best. And uh, at the end of the day, I love to pass, but people <laughs> don't talk about my defense, but I love to play defense. Right. And, to win, and I actually didn't like to like to, to guard the point guards. I always wanted to guard the top scorer on the other team um, because I just took it as a challenge, and um, I really enjoy playing defense. And obviously, you're going to guard the best player you're going to get scored on, but you just want to make their life hard. Um, and all those players that were there, I'm sure that, you know, Diana Taurasi, all those players that I had to guard, uh, we had our battles, but that's that's what's gonna you know make it fun you know uh, on the court to to go against the best. Where was you, and what was your reaction when you heard you made the Hall of Fame? Yeah, so I actually was overseas, and um, my phone rang, and it was um, it was a weird number, and I usually don't even answer, but I did answer <laughs> that time, and they were like, um, they told me that I was gonna be a finalist, and then they were gonna be voting, and then um, in a few months they were gonna announce the finalists. Finalists. So again, it's just like the weight trophy, you know, something that, you know, you don't, you don't expect anything. Um, you play the game the right way. You supposed to, you do what you were supposed to do. And I think all these things happen organically. Yeah. And then when they happen is a little bit of a pinching moment, like where you have to kind of pinch yourself to, to, 
to see, okay, now yeah. I'm in the Hall of Fame. And, and that's kind of crazy because, you know, you never play for that. You you play to have fun. You play because you love it and you play to win. Yeah. And those things happen organically. So so obviously it was it was a, a day that, that I remember. Uh, I was actually at a game. Uh, I was in Spain at a game and then the phone rang and I took the call and I'm like, wow. And then I was like, okay, who should I call first? So I called right. my parents and I told <laughs> yeah. them. And they were like, what the hell is that? Right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, I'm I'm very blessed. What made you decide to be an agent? Well, the first thing is I knew that no matter what I did next, I wanted to stay close to the game. It's what I love to do. And you know what they say, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your exactly. life, right? So, uh, and also knew that I didn't want to coach. Right. I, I was very sure of that. Okay. You know, being a point guard, you kind of coach all your life. You know, go here, go there, box right. out, what the hell are you doing? You know, like, so you are a coach because you have a coach's mentality. But I didn't want to have the same routine be inside of a gym again, watch film, and it's, mm-hmm. it's probably worse than being a player, the, the amount of time uh, and the mental that goes into that. And I knew that I also wanted to have a job that gave me a little bit more flexibility because I left my house like my family when I was 16. Right. So I wanted to find something where I could work remotely and be spend more time with my parents and spend more time with my family. And the more I thought about it, I was like, this is what I want to do. At the time, there was not too many women representing women, um, especially women that actually played the game. So it yeah. just made sense to me. And the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, this makes sense. This is exactly what I want to do. How cool was it to see like one of your records to be broken by by Vandersloot, who you represent. Yeah. And let me say, I'm a fan. Shot town She brought yeah. us, she got <laughs> us <laughs> one. She got us a chip. Her, right Candace, and yeah. the gang. So much respect to her. But how dope was that? Yeah, for you? I mean, I knew it was going to be broken. I mean, it's it was just a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, she's someone that I, we actually played together when I played for Chicago yeah, one, in yeah. uh, two th- my last year in the league, 2012. I played for Chicago for one year, uh, one summer. And, uh, and we were teammates, you know, and it was kind of like, um, you know, I, my body was basically shutting down and I was like, okay, I know this is going to be my last year, but I was able to uh, mentor her a little bit. And a lot of people compared her to me just because she's a true point guard. And it's almost like the true centers and the true point guards is basically dinosaurs. Like they are in a few years that we ain't going to have no more. Like there's still a few out there. Uh, and she's one of them. And uh, I mean, she's someone that I truly love watching play uh, between her, Sue Bird, Chelsea mm-hmm. Gray. Those are, I think, the three yeah. that were like true point guards. Obviously, Sue retired last year and we have Chelsea and, and yeah. Courtney. Uh, but um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan. You was 17, 18 when you came mm-hmm. over. You didn't stayed in the United States since you came over from Old Dominion. I so it's sure been did. how many years? Yeah, so I came in ninety four, right? Are you good you get a math? You're about, yeah. <laughs> about to be thirty, right? Yeah. But I always always played overseas. So I would play here in the summer and yeah. then I would go back overseas yeah. to play uh overseas. But I never played in, like in Portugal yeah. per se. I would play in Italy, Russia, you know, Turkey, Czech Republic. You been one of the first players to come from overseas and come over here and and how you then build you a home, family and friends, like Yeah. Tell us just about that process from like from Old Dominion all the way through your career, the people that you have met and built a family with that's in another country. Because a lot of people don't go <laughs> to yeah. another country and then right. build a whole nother family over there. Yeah. So, I mean, basketball and my career was great, but really it's over now. Like you go by so fast. But the things that stays, you know, the, the people that you meet, the friends that you make, like they're basically your new family. I mean, if I grab my phone now, I probably like 90 percent of the people on my phone and my contacts I met through basketball. Yeah, and like right. I said, it's just, you know, connect so many people. Um, and that's the thing that I'm most grateful for is yeah. the memories that that obviously that I have. But the people that I've met, I mean, it changed my life, you know, and like I said, my family still lives in Portugal so yeah. I kind of rely on all these people that I've met that now become family or you know close friends uh, to make sure that you know I can stay over here and not be super homesick from not having my family here. What type of cool stories or either cool or crazy I remember Sue told us a crazy story about playing for like a uh, yeah I played for him too Shop Thai yeah, yeah. so what so like <laughs> so, what type of crazy stories you got from playing overseas cause like a lot of a lot of people got crazy stories from like you know y'all had to go back then especially had to play in the WNBA but still go overseas so yeah. what type of stories do you got from those experiences I mean I can go back on um, that story from Russia because uh, Sue had an Israeli passport DT like Diana Taurasi had Italian passport so our team was crazy like we right. it was me <laughs> diana sue we had tina thompson we had lauren Damn. jackson i mean it's basically like an all-star, all-star team. team so we all played on the same team uh and shop uh the the guy that um you know he was our owner um 
And he was the first man overseas that really invested in women's basketball. He paid us the right amount of right. money. Like we flew charter, we stayed five star hotels, no roommates, <laughs> yeah. you know, so he really changed the game. Um, but I mean, you know, when you play with a team like that overseas, you really feel like you are in the States because everybody right. speaks English. You're around everybody all the time. And I mean, we just go to dinners and stay for like sometimes like six, seven hours just telling stories and just enjoying. And uh, and that's the thing that sometimes, you know, you come back to the States and now it's like, okay, now you are, you know, I'm trying to kill you. I'm right, trying to right, win, right? right? Yeah. But then you overseas, you're more relaxed and you really can connect with people on a different level. Um, and, and those are the best memories. Like just, you know, Diane is like super funny. She always had something to say, sarcastic. Yeah. And uh, just really getting to know them uh, as people and not as, you know, opponents. Uh, so we were teammates. So so that that was cool. Seeing the WNBA from when you first got into the league of, and seeing how it is now today of more benefits, they taking care of the women more, they're yeah. trying to create, you know, better flight situation and hotel and childcare and mm -hmm. uh, how proud of you how they're trying to push and push and push and try to get better and better and better. I mean, it's time, like anything, we have to evolve. And the thing that is important is we continue to move forward, even if it's baby steps. I mean, the league is, what, 27 years old now. Yeah. So um, it's we come a long way, um, but there's still so much more that can be done, yeah. uh, especially when it comes to salaries, expansion. Like, we need more uh, jobs. We need more teams. There's a lot of players out there that get cut, and they're good. But yeah. there's just not enough uh, room for everybody. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm proud. I'm one of the pioneers, and we've put in a lot of work for the league to to have a great foundation and to grow uh but the talent now is ridiculous you know is uh i mean think about it like when i was a little girl i dream about what playing in the nba which i knew it was unrealistic but little girls now at five seven Let eight they they know the WNBA is here to stay and they they can dream about it because it's real we just seen a great stretch of women's basketball coming off the the uh, women's tournament mm -hmm. um, yeah. in the NCAA, then coming into the uh, playoffs. Yeah. You don't see that every year all the time, and now you're seeing the women's brand being at a high level. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, I've seen it, but it, I'm happy that people that haven't seen right. it have yeah. a chance to see it now, yeah. and they're turning on the TVs, and they're grabbing their little girls to watch with them, yeah. and you see we're breaking records as far as audience and yeah. mm -hmm. uh, money that is being spent, sponsors mm -hmm. that are, companies are investing in women. Yeah. Um, I mean, players now don't even, they don't want to leave college, you know, they because they're, they're making money, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, so I, I mean, I knew it all along. I'm just yeah. glad that the world is awake now awake and now. more yeah. people are tuning in to, to watch not just women's basketball, but women in sports. Who are some of the, the, the women in today's game that you know, must see TV for you? Because uh, you have a unique game. I know you was must see TV for me, but who yeah. are some of the... The women in today's Probably game top of the least, I would say Chelsea Gray. I mean, Point God. Yeah. we in Vegas too, you know. So, <laughs> yeah. Saying. So, I mean, she's special. Uh, special. She's special just because she can pass. She makes her teammates better. But if it's time to take over, she can do that as well. Yeah. You know, so obviously, um, I mean, you have Asia Wilson, you have Brianna Stewart that are 6'5, but they can do everything, shoot yeah. threes, you know, put it on the floor. Like I said, that true post player it's kind of going away now he's like the NBA you have people being so more versatile and everybody wants to face the basket and dribble and pass and they can do everything so um but yeah I mean number one I would say Chelsea Gray for sure tell me this you coming from a small town and, and, and overseas and then making it you know like when you started to get to a situation where you had you know you ain't got to take care of parents or anything when did you like when you got some money you got that bag and you want to do something to treat Tisha right. What did you What did you do for yourself? Even if it was like you look back, like yeah, that was kind of crazy. But like, what did you do when you got that? When you first got situated and got some good money and feel I like mean, I could do something special for myself. Our money wasn't as long as y'all money, I, I, okay? <laughs> so probably like a Louis bag or something like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like y'all be like, oh, I bought my mama a house. I'm like, no, I couldn't do that. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so you just splurge a little bit more at the mall instead of going to the gas store. Maybe you go to the Louis story, you know. Right, right, I got you. <laughs> I have a start bench trade. Oh uh, Lord. Lindsay Whalen, Teresa Weatherspoon, Don Staley. Who do you start? Who do you bench? Who do you trade? I know. This is y'all is all trying to get people in trouble with this damn question. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. 
Uh, okay, so I'm going to go by age. <laughs> okay, I'm going to respect the OG. So I'm going to start Dawn. Okay. I'm going to bench Teaspoon because she's still going to come off you the bench. And I'm going to trade. One? Yeah, I'm going to trade away, you know. <laughs> We we going you know age is a status so we gonna respect the OGs. <laughs> respect, respect the OGs. <laughs> if you had to pick four other teammates that you uh, you play with throughout your career that you play with to make a, a all time starting five, mm-hmm. who would be them other four teammates? Mm. I play with a lot of people, and um, as a point guard, you know I was very very thankful for them having great hands in basically grabbing my assists and, you know, turning into baskets. But this yeah. is a tough one. I mean, I'm going to start with Yo. I mean, I won a championship with Yo, so I'm going to start with Yo. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Candace just because versatility, you know, mm-hmm. she can play different Yo positions. And Candace. Ooh. <laughs> Yo and Candace, that's crazy. Um, Two shot towns, just, just keeping track. Go ahead. Yeah, does it count overseas or only America? Everywhere, wherever. All yeah. right, so I'm going to go with uh, Diana Taurasi as my two. I play with her in Russia. I never play with her in the States. I mean, only all-star games. But yeah. um, And Ooh. then as a three, I think I go with uh, Tamika Catchings. Oh, catch. That's, that's a squad. lineup. That's yeah. a squad. That's uh, this I is like tough, that. though. I'm leaving a lot of people out. So <laughs> you spoke on Ruthie Bowden and, and, and Cheryl Ford, like you know, those are some 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 who I felt like because I was really into it at that time. Those were some superstars that really don't really get the credit and the judge mm-hmm. do. Just talk about her, how they were and what they brought to the table, and how 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 you know formidable they formidable they were as players. Blue collar, you know, mm-hmm. both of them. Uh, Ruth, uh, Ruthie, I had a chance to see it with my own eyes. Uh, we were teammates. So just to know, like, the, the work that she put in, the hours. Um, she's somebody that I respected tremendously. Like, coming into Sacramento, uh, I knew that I was going to play with her, and I always looked up to her. Uh, and Cheryl Ford, I mean, just obviously somebody that, uh, you know, her dad was Carmelo, Malone, but she right. never let that define her. She created her yeah. own lane, and she really uh, put in the work. Amazing rebounder, probably wow. one of the best yeah, that, you yeah. know, we have ever seen. Um, just <laughs> just strong and just could do everything, you yeah. know, around the basket. You always want to get the props from your peers. Mm-hmm. You know, you being an overseas player too, how does it feel when other players, before and current players, recognize your game, love your game, respect your game, and they tell you how dope they thought that you was to them? Yeah, I think that's everything. And um, especially people that had a chance to play with me, you know, and to to know that they believe that I made them better and they wanted to play with me and they appreciate it and they respect. I think the respect is everything. When you respect your peers, um, it's funny because I sent Sue a message because I watched the whole I think it was three hours, a whole like um, Jersey retirement thing with the Seattle Storm. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go home because I wanted to watch it because that's how much I respect her. And I feel like she did so much for the game and not just the women's, you know, not just the WNBA, but like worldwide, you know. And I I waited like three days and I said, I hope your phone has stopped blowing up. But I just (laughs) wanted to let you know that I watched the whole thing and and, um, I respect you so much. And she was just like, you know, it comes better also from people that you know, you respect as well, yeah, you I know, and, and that's the thing, you know, it's like your peers and especially the ones that really stayed in the league for a long time, yeah. you had a chance to play with or against yeah. and, and they give you praise. That's everything. And shout out Seattle too. Cause I felt like they did that the right oh, way. They honored absolutely. her. They went all out. It was, it was a multi-step yes. process like it should have been. And I felt like they, they did it to the T, putting it on like all the way on top of the, the key arena and all of the flag going yeah. on, everything that went into it. And then shout out to the fish. She came with the green, with yeah. the jump, like she was <laughs> day, like, you know, Sue gonna be fresh. But yeah. like, shout out that whole, everything was everything like, was it was the way it should have been because she's a super icon and yes. legend. So it was good to see them celebrate her the right 100%. way. Well, that's a wrap, man. We got a chance today to sit down with basketball royalty, man. We appreciate the legendary Tisha Pinatero. Champion, we appreciate world you. champion. World Thank champ, you. Hall of Fame. My pleasure. WNBA Thank you, guys. WNBA Top 25, all that. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.